So we're up for the start again, and this is the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. We've got the 1863 Club uh, and Enniskillen Royal Boat Club. Enniskillen on the left of our picture, and away they go. Yeah, this Enniskillen crew is a real standout crew from Ireland. Um, and you can see in the way they've gone up there, they look really sharp, they look really well together, um, and they have already put considerable distance into that crew from 1863. 1863, originally the London Oratory School's alumni club, but um, recently they've taken in the school rowers as well since their school boat club shut down. Yeah, but look, we've already got what a lead um, that's been opened up by Ennis Gillen already. That was a mighty start from them. Real power off the blocks to move so far, so far. It's a bit of a deceptive angle because our catamaran's just trying to catch up with the slippy Ennis Gillen crew. But I think you can see they've got a commanding lead. But as we come and join the race live uh, down the course, just passing the halfway mark, those red boys there are exactly halfway. Well, Ennis Gillen are now in a much more comfortable position. Yeah, and you can see it helps with those big E's on the back of the Enniskillen crew. It just allows you to see how well their bodies are moving in time. And again, I'd say, you know, these guys are pretty relaxed and obviously less experienced than that Brooks crew that we just saw race younger, uh, newer into the sport perhaps, but they have that same kind of quality to them. They look like they're just trying to sort of enjoy the lead they've built up and just uh, more of a languid, loose kind of stroke as they go down the course. Yeah, you might you might say that they're rowing with ease, uh, Zoe, and indeed they are with this commanding lead. Clear water, well and truly opened up by the halfway mark um, over the 1863 club. As you say, that's a, a state school in London, um, and they sort of the, the, all the boys come from the oratory school, although they're rowing under the banner of the 1863 club. Four of them made the national schools regatta a final in the fours and the Wallington Wallingford final, so they're no slouches, but I think the Enniskillen um, Boat Club, by comparison, can see them there approaching the horizon, top Irish junior eights, um, and have a really strong season behind them. Yeah, and four of this crew from Enniskillen raced in the Forley last year, so some of them have some experience here at Henley, um, but I think for all of them, this is the first time they've raced here in the eights, so different kind of level of competition, and ultimately, Looks like it's going to be Enniskillen in this race, uh, bar disaster, but they'll be coming up against either Eton, who are last year's winners, or Brock, so either last year's winners or a crew that's managed to vanquish last, last yeah, year's we'll winners. Yeah, we'll see Eton a little bit later this afternoon, the holders of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. A cup that was started in 1946 when the young Princess Elizabeth visited the regatta for the first time. And this year we had 43 entries, four from the US and two from Australia, so it attracts talent from around the world. A really, really competitive junior men's eights event. And now, of course, we have the junior women's eights equivalent event in, the, in this platform in the Jubilee year it's been named for Prince Philip. So we have the Princess Elizabeth, which is junior men's eight, and the Prince Philip, which is junior women's eight. A, fair, a fine couple to follow down this handy course. And both, I'm sure, will be fantastic events. The entries look great in both competitions, and often that's where some of the best racing of the regatta comes from. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing some of that as we move through the week. But at the moment, you can see this Enna Skillen crew from Ireland just looking really quite relaxed now. Yeah, I, I like to look at the, you can see the green sort of collars on the blades where they go through those gates there. You can see how the timing works really well together. They're moving together forwards and back, but they're also rotating the blades, squaring and feathering together quite nicely. And as we come into the enclosures, we said they've got a bit of wind that comes across. Often see the blades sort of fly up a little bit away from that. And you can see here also the rig on this crew. You can see in the middle of the boat, those two E's with their oars together on the far side. It's a different rig. Uh, than what we see in most eights down here, but it allows the stroke and bow to be on the same side, the guys at the two ends of the boat, which is arguably supposed to be a little bit more efficient. Yes, you can argue it many ways with physicists. I'm not sure anyone's come up with a conclusive answer yet. So here we go, Enna Skillin crossing the line, first day of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. Comfortable victory for them. Um, happy to confirm that a little cheer goes up from the Enna Skillin crew as they paddle across the line. In 1863, well, valiant effort, they threw everything into it. Uh, they're still approaching the line here as the wind gets under their blades. Uh, heads going a little bit, it shows how much they've spent down the course. They've given it everything, 
uh, but they really did face a fantastic crew and um, well done to all of them, exhausted uh, through and through. So Enniskillen Royal um, Boat Club beat the 1863 club and go through to tomorrow in the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup.